here we go. I'm letting people in uh, just now here. Okay. And there are the first one who comes in. Perfect. All right. Welcome everyone to today's event, today's Finimize event. I'm super excited to have you here. And as you tune in, please just let us know your name and where you're from in the chat box. I would love to know. Last time we had people from all around the world. I'm based in Sweden. I know Catherine is in Geneva. So let's see how many countries you can cover this time around. But just let us know. All right. You have the Q&A box right down there. And if you have any questions, put your questions in there because I will be picking from the Q&A box as soon as we get to that point. All right. My name is Sarah Bengtsen and I'm the founder of Money Meets Soul and I'm super passionate about sustainable investing. And today we will be talking about how we can diversify our portfolios with impact. Now, before we move any further in, I'm super curious to know how many of you already invest in bonds today? So I'm gonna launch a poll for you here. So please just let me know how many of you invest in bonds. Okay, awesome. You're getting, you're going at it. Uh, yeah, all right. So no, not yet for the most of you, but some of you still do. That's, that's good. I mean, if you're a new, kind of a new investor, it's hard to understand why bonds are necessary um, in a portfolio, but we might be talking about that too as well. So, all right. I mean, typically when we talk about sustainable investing, we tend to talk about the stock market and stocks and how we can influence companies in that way. But there's another way to influence companies and that is through the bond market, specifically through the green bond market. And that is what we'll be talking about today. Now, this has been gaining traction throughout the past few years. And specifically now there are talks about you know, hitting the first $1 trillion mark, that's huge. But what even is a green bond and why should we care about it? And I mean, why is it gaining momentum? I've invited Catherine Reichlin, sorry for butchering your name, but Reichlin to talk about this. She is head of the financial research department at Mirabeau and she's been following this trend for quite some time. So I know she's definitely the right person to talk to about this. Uh, it's gonna be a 15 minute conversation between the two of us followed by a 15 minute Q and A from you guys. So make sure you add those questions that you have in the Q&A box. And you can also vote for the questions that you find the most interesting, which means that you should do that. So we make sure that you get your, all of your answers or all of your questions answered that you might want. All right, so I will stop my screen sharing and I will tune in to you, Catherine. So let's just start with the basics here. You know, what even is a green bond? Yes, uh, that's, a, that's a very good question. I'm going to say something that might seem silly, but is important. A green bond is a bond like any other bond, which means that when you're buying a green bond, you're lending money uh, either to a country, to an organization, could be the World Bank, to a corporate. It can be on emerging market. It can be on developed market. But what makes the difference is that when you buy a green bond, you know to which project specifically your money is allocated because for conventional bonds it's um, it's broader usually um, it's called general financing purposes and then you don't know exactly where your your money is going uh, so i think this is this is really what makes a green bond a green bond but then there are principles a green bond should follow. Uh, the first is the use of proceeds. So as I said, this is the cornerstone for a green bond, uh, meaning uh, the money is allocated to a specific project. So this is the first principle. Then we have the um, process for the project evaluation and the selection of the project. How does the company do this? Uh, then we have the management of proceeds. It's, uh, what it means is that the company or the issuer should open a sub-account 
so that they can track the money. So it's not lost with the rest of the, of the money in the balance sheet. And then the reporting, um, meaning that it should at least be included in the um, annual report. And you probably have noticed that I use the word should uh, because here we're talking about principles. So there's no legal bind with green bonds. Uh, it's, a, it's a voluntary process and the market is um, self-regulating up, up to now. Um, maybe an example of uh, what I mean by self-regulating. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, some years ago, a, uh, a Chinese company that is manufacturing solar panels issued a, uh, a bond and they self-label it green, but it wasn't linked to a process, to a project, sorry. It was, there was nothing from the green bond principles. So the market didn't validate it as a green bond. It wasn't sold as a green bond. It didn't enter ETF or uh, indexes. So um, this is this is what uh, what it means. This self regulation. Okay. Um, yeah, I think glo globally, this is this is what a, a green bond is compared to a bond. Yeah, I mean, if you want to simplify it even further, you can say if a company wants to make their company more green in any way, environmentally friendly, they can choose to go to the bank to loan money, or they can issue a green bond, which will help them raise money, right? Uh, but why yes, is it game correct. now? What, what's the purpose for, that, for this? Um, so it's, it's not a brand new market. So it's important to see it's uh, something like 14 years old uh, market. It's gaining momentum since 2014. But uh, those last years really uh, are making a difference. Uh, I think uh, there are many, many uh, explanations. First, there's a, a change in the mindset. I mean, uh, we, we all, people are increasingly um, aware that some changes need to happen. I mean, look at your community and how many people follow your events. And I mean, it's, it's obvious that there, there's a change in the mindset. Also, it's interesting to see that there's a shift of wealth towards women and towards millennials. I don't want to enter into stereotypes here, but uh, women and millennials seem to be more sensitive to, to green matters, to social matters, and uh, they, they are also ready to act, which is, which is also important. And in finance, we have this uh, good old rule of um, uh, supply and, and demand. So we see the demand is growing, but the supply is also growing because for uh, issuers it's uh, nice to diversify their investor base it it brings them new new type of investors and maybe we can we can have a word about gdf um, uh, th that was really a turning point in 2014 but to to finish to under, answer those questions there's also a uh, regulation uh, because the the change in the mindset also reaches the states, it's especially in Europe with the new uh, EU regulation. So all this is um, offering um, stage and momentum to the, um, to the green bond market. Um, there's maybe something I like to add here because we're talking green bonds, but um, you may also encounter social bonds so I'm not gonna, it's not the subject today, but just to touch the word, a social bond is like a green bond. The difference is that the project is not green, it's linked to um, social matters. So last year, what we saw on the market with uh, the COVID, with uh, some government uh, working hard to sustain employment, with the movement of Black Lives Matters, last year was really a year for social bonds, but this year, uh, green bonds are again in the driver's seats. Mm. And if you don't mind maybe sharing again your, um, your screen, you can see how uh, this market is, uh, is growing almost. Uh, ex um, is it this um, one? Yes. Yes, it's this one. Thank you. And, and what you can see as well, so 2020 uh, was a bit slower, but uh, there were also sustainable bonds, which are mixed between social and green. 
that, that took some space and the social bonds. And also uh, the EU, the EU is really becoming a massive issuer of, uh, of green and, and social bonds. So um, the growth is here and it will, it will continue. Yeah. Why would you as an investor want to invest in a green bond? Um, it's a it's a way to diversify your portfolio. If you're if you're look if you're an impact investor, that's that's a way to allocate this portion of your wealth that should be in something more conservative than the stock market. Even if we can discuss about how conservative bonds are currently given the low interest rates, but um, it's it's a matter of diversification. And yes, impact is uh, is really uh, gaining gaining momentum. Okay, so if I, as an investor, want to you know gain exposure for the green bond fund, what what should I keep in mind when I okay when I invest myself? Mm -hmm. Um, that's a very good uh, question because you want to avoid bad surprises. So it's important to know where you <laughs> where, where you where you walk. Um, if we come back, I think it was one of my first sentences saying that green bonds are first uh, bonds. So meaning that, that in green bonds, you have to assess um, two, two levels. You have to assess the financial level because you're doing an investment, taking a financial risk. And then you have to assess uh, the green level or the sustainable uh, level because impact financing is about having a positive measurable impact, but it's also about getting return. Yeah. So um, maybe I can start with the uh, financial uh, matters. So globally, you're lending money to a company, either you know exactly where your money goes or you don't know exactly, but bottom line, it's the same balance sheet meaning it's the same financial risk. So the returns will be the same for a green bond uh, than for a conventional bond. So buying bonds today, when interest rates are so low and when we are in this, uh, we're talking about inflation again, uh, can be um, painful for bonds because when uh, yields move up, the prices of your bonds go down. So this is for the... Um, financial part just to give to give an idea maybe for those who are not um, super familiar with with yields in the US currently if you lend money for 10 years to the US government your yearly return will be 1.6 percent if you do the same in in Europe and you lend it to Germany you will have a negative return of minus 0 10 uh, percent so yeah. Not, not very exciting, I, I, <laughs> at least the least to say. Still, um, to diversify a part of your portfolio, it, it, it makes sense. So this is for the financial aspects of the green bond. So these are the questions you need to ask yourself from a financing point of view. And then you have the sustainable uh, aspects. And here, one of my key messages today is um, always be careful with labels, you know, and ask yourself the right questions. Um, I think one of the questions is always to ask yourself, do I want to support companies that are transiting? So do I want to give them support? Or are they companies I don't want to lend money full stop? Mm -hmm. um, maybe a couple of examples on that. Yeah. Um, EDF, EDF, French utility uh, company, very involved in uh, nuclear energy. So they issue a green bond. Okay, good. It's for transition. It's for a renewable energy project. But still, EDF is a company that produces nuclear energy. So do you want to lend your money to EDF or not? And, and here there's no right or wrong question because this is a lot about your values and, and about what you believe to be right or, or, or not right. So there's no judgment about it, but it's important to understand those matters to, 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 to make decisions. Definitely. And, I mean, one thing that we have always understood when it comes to sustainable investing in general is that there are no objective right or wrong. 
is always very sensitive yes. to what you what you believe in and what you value. Um, mm -hmm. But that's great. Do you have any final just quick takeaway as to how we can help to get in on the market if we want to invest in that before we go okay, over so, to the audience? Yes. So uh, so you, you have uh, several several ways to do that. Either you can really go straight into, into bonds. And in the same way that you have uh, rating agencies like Moody's, S&P to assess the financial risks, you have to support you um, rating agencies focusing on the ESG, like Sustainalytics or Vigeo. So mm -hmm. this is one way. Another way would be um, uh, collective placement like a fund, where you really delegate to the uh, fund manager uh, the selection of the green bonds that will be included in the fund, or um, ETFs are also, are also an, uh, an option. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes uh, some things go through the filters because the filters are very quantitative and not super qualitative. So this is something to be uh, aware of. Okay, awesome. All right, guys, we're going to move on to the Q&A portion of the conversation. So I see that some of you have asked some questions in the chat box. Make sure you pop them into the Q&A box because that's, that is the one that I will be looking at uh, today. And the first question I have here is, why should companies borrow at higher interest, higher interest through this bond rather than make use of cheap money? That's a good question. Mm. Yeah, the, actually the companies will not pay more for a green bond uh, than for a conventional bond. That's, that's the way to get financing. And even in some cases, it is now cheaper for a company to issue a green bond than a conventional bond. And this is what's called in the market greenium. So the pre premium for green means that as an investor, I will get a couple of basis points less because I want something green. So actually, they, they're, they're paying the same amount of money for a green or for a non-green and sometimes less. Okay. So... You could say that it makes sense for the investor that are kind of in charge. Investors are the ones taking the hit and not the companies. Yeah, actually, I think both are. It's interesting for both because the issuer is sure to have traction and big order books and is sure to diversify its, its investors. And you as an investor, you know where your money goes to which project it is, uh, it is allocated. So I think they are, it's a, it's a win-win. Yeah. You know, usually the, this is how the, the market is. There's usually no big winner and big losers when, when things are issued. Further okay. down the road, it's another story, but uh, yeah. at the moment of the issuance, yes. Okay, awesome. I, I saw that Carl and uh, someone else, I think, yeah, Tanya, you're writing in the chat box. You, would you mind asking your questions in the Q&A box instead? Uh, that way I can have them all in the same place. Uh, so Joanna asks, uh, where are the best places to find and then invest in green social and sustainable bonds for someone like us? So um, <laughs> I'm not sure who someone like us is, but uh, um, I don't know if you have a bank or a banker, but uh, that person should be able to provide you with a list of bonds. Uh, we, we talked together, Sarah, uh, earlier, um, about ETFs, so ETF is also uh, is also a solution. Um, the I I I work on the, on the, on Bloomberg, so this is where I get most of my my information. Um, it really depends what kind of um, tools you have at your disposal, and if you have people to support you in that. Yeah. I just posted for everyone to know in the chat box, a few of the green bond ETFs that I could find before this conversation. So check your broker if they have these ones available, for example, if you're using uh, the typical discount providers, the discount brokers, they have more ETFs. If you're using mm -hmm. a financial advisor, you can always ask them for, um, you know, put some pressure on them as to, as to why, how you yes. invest. <laughs> Uh, exactly, and, and challenge, challenge them about uh, why did they select this bond and not that bond, and what is the project behind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Elise has also a very good question. Are you concerned about the value of bonds de declining even more as interest rates are bound to increase at some point? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I that's that's a very good that's a very good question. I think um, this this is where you also need a good uh, financing view, like avoid too long durations. You know, uh, today is not the moment to buy a bond maturing in ten years if that's that's the only bond in your portfolio. Um, rule of the thumb is um, uh, ten ten base no a hundred basis points of of interest or yield uh, rise will be a 10% uh, loss on your bond. So it's um, there's um, the, the longer you go, the longer the maturity is, the bigger the potential loss or win. But currently in this environment, it's more skewed towards a potential loss. So yes, be, be careful with your maturities. And also when you buy an ETF or a fund, this is also something to look at because you can have volatility on the price of your investment. Mm. Okay. So, but since you're obviously an expert in fixed income, should we expect interest rates to increase soon or will they still be kept low for the foreseeable future? Um, that, that's, um, it, it's been years that we, that everyone says interest rates should go up and then we had a financial crisis and they didn't go up. And then we had COVID and they didn't go up. Um, currently, they already have a, had a movement since, since a year, but they could go for further up for, for sure. Um, if inflation comes back, for example, that, that's, gonna, that's gonna hit the, the, the bonds. Currently, they're, not, they're protected by the central banks because central banks are putting so much money in the system that it is supporting low uh, yields and they're keeping the interest rates low. But um, we're, we're all waiting for the turning point. So it's, it's not the best moment to, to buy bonds for sure. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Uh, Matteo also asked if there's any independent organization that can certify the green bonds to make mm -hmm. sure that they yes, that's... go where they says they go. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's a super good question and an important question. So uh, there, uh, there are rating agencies that give a third opinion on the green bond. So sometimes when an issuer comes on the market, he says, this and that is my project. And that independent rating agencies has assessed the project and validates uh, everything we have uh, put forward. Um, also, um, with all the stories around um, greenwashing, I mean, everyone is, is paying way more attention and I'm not sure issuers would want to take a big, a big risk, but mm. still you're, you're right, you need to, this things to, to check. So maybe if I can hijack your question a little bit, Matteo here, but would potential technologies like blockchain be a way of certifying green bonds in the future? It's um, it's it's a good point because you know uh, the first green bond was issued by EIB, the European Investment Bank, in two thousand and seven, and EIB last month issued the first blockchain linked bond. Okay. So they are they are uh, usually um, um, how you say bellwethers, like opening the way. They did for green bond, and now we are looking at what is going to happen with this uh, blockchain bond because probably there's that's one of the ideas behind it. Okay, um, but it's awesome. it's brand new. It's it's not even got two months. So <laughs> who says that the financial industry is just a bunch of you know mammoths moving? It, it's it's innovative as well, right? Um, all right. Another question we have here is from Carl. So. Why would a company choose to issue a bond rather than go into a bank and ask to borrow money? Mm. Um, con market conditions. Uh, probably the bank will it it will cost the the company maybe a bit more than than coming to the market. And it's also a question of diversification because a lot of companies have bond loan have have loans with banks, but also have uh, bonds on the on the market. 
uh, the, um, the, the, the flexibility they can have with bonds on the market is probably bigger than what they can have with banks. But again, it's, it's not a question of diversification. Never put all your eggs in the same basket and company are doing the same with their loans and bonds and credits and yeah. Okay, could it have anything to do with marketing as well? I mean, Amazon just launched a, a green bond or green social merger kind of bond and it became a big thing in the media. Would that be a kind of a marketing mm -hmm. thing for Amazon as well? Instead of just going to the bank and ask for the same money? Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> the first question is um, how much Amazon really needs money because they have the same day they were issuing the bonds, they were upgraded by Moody's. One of the reasons is because of their financial strength. I mean, they have $73 billion in cash and equivalents, and still they came to the market to borrow $18.5 billion on eight bonds, and one of them was sustainable. As you mentioned, a sustainable bond has green and social uh, features. And this is, this is another example, like the EDF bond. You know, a, a company that is not an ESG champion can issue a green bond, can issue a sustainable bond. The question then is, uh, you as an investor, uh, do you want to invest in a green social bond, full stop? Or do you want to lend that money to a company that, that is doing well in terms of ESG? Mm. So that, again, as, as you said earlier, Sarah, there's no right or wrong. It's all, it's all a question of personal values. But I think this is a very... I, I made a paper about it because I was very surprised knowing the, um, the ESG um, track record of, of Amazon. But on the other hand, Amazon is included in ESG indices because the way they can report the progress they do um, allows to pass the, the filters that are not super deep in qualitative terms. Mm -hmm. So this is where you really need your critical eye as an yeah. investor. Definitely. Okay, you guys, we only have a few more minutes before the conversation is supposed to end. So if you have any questions that haven't, hasn't gone answered, put them in the Q&A box and vote for the other ones that you think are interesting. So we make sure that you get the answer that you want from this. But one thing that's in, interesting here that, uh, sorry, Boland brought up is that not only companies are issuing green bonds, right? It's governments as well. Yes. Would you mind just yes, that's, saying that's, a little bit about yes, that? Yes, that, that's... Completely right, but they were the um, they were the last ones to um, to enter the party. The first one was the uh, supranational, like e EIB, World Bank. Then came the corporates. Um, I would say the first country, not putting um, a huge bet on it, but um, um, my memory says 2016, and it was Poland. Yeah. And then you can also question Poland. I mean. Poland is not from a from a green point of view, is is not the um, an ESG champion, but still they could issue a green bond. Well, that's probably and, because they needed it. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But it's you know it's the same question you would ask for a corporate for uh, Amazon or for EDF, and and the European Union is is uh, is becoming this this new giant in the, in the green bond uh, landscape because uh, they have a plan to issue 750 billion euros and one third will be issued through green bonds. Mm. So yeah. yes, countries and zones are, are also issuing uh, green bonds. Okay. And Carl is also asking us, you know, what is the average interest rates we can earn from a green bond today? Mm. Well, it, it depends on the it depends on the maturity. Um, I think a little um, cheat sheet. Um, the um, Amazon Sustainable Bond, uh, two years maturity, will give you zero point two percent per annum. So you will get twice zero two percent. Mm. Then, of course, if you go on longer maturities, you will you will get uh, more more return, but but given the, the level of, of interest rates, it's, it's, 
it's not very uh, it's not it's not a juicy market let's put it that way well it's not supposed to be the gas pedal on of your portfolio either it's supposed to be the uh, airbag right so. yes <laughs> that's a very good metaphor <laughs> okay awesome well we've run out of time guys i'm so happy that you all stayed as long as you did it's been lovely talking to you catherine and uh, thank you very much thank you for having me it was yeah. a lot of fun thank you if you want to connect with her more going forward you can probably find her through linkedin mirabeau group for example yes so uh, yeah well thank you have a lovely evening everyone it's good talking thank to you. you thank you thank you very much Thank you. Bye-bye.